All righty, my good people. Welcome back to the Blessed Beyond Measure podcast. I am your neighborhood hope dealer, CL The Source. Thank you once again for tuning in and coming back for another servant of that positivity. Yo, I am here with another episode and with a extra special guest. This is something that I really enjoy doing. Um, I have a wonderful family. I'm very blessed. I say it all the time. I'm so thankful to have a very strong support system, some very loving people in my life. And our guest today is somebody that ever since I can remember, she's always been super vibrant, has such a radiant spirit, super positive attitude, and is just like so happy go lucky. And I just love being around her and, you know, um, having her today and being able to share her as our guest today on the Bless Beyond Measure platform is a complete honor. And today I'm welcoming my cousin, Jean Hezon, who I know as Sunshine. And <laughs> her name is Sunshine for a reason, because she very much is a ray of sunshine if you get to meet her. Sunshine, how are you today? It is a happy, happy Friday. It is a fun Friday that we like to call at our house. It is also Frappuccino Friday because <laughs> someone's getting a Frappuccino after school today. Nice, so nice. It'll be, it'll, it's going to be awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here because I really, really appreciate this. I've been looking forward to this all week when we confirmed the thank details you. of this. Yeah, you know, like I when I say that you have a vibrant personality and a, and a radiant spirit, I really believe that. And like, I actually was looking forward to this to to get to know you even on another level because when we talk we never have these like well not never but it's hardly ever that we have these conversations where we're like yeah, we getting don't. to know the 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 personal sides of each other you know what i'm saying it's more like we're here at parties and you know we're yeah. having fun and stuff like that but to have these like moments and to be able to share that with the audience i'm really really excited yeah it's always that. very much like in passing and it's always very much you know you know five minutes here and five minutes there so yeah right. I was I'm very excited to kind of have this time with you because we we don't ever get this kind of time seriously and I think, and even if we do you get like you know 10 minutes we we have drinks you've got other people and I mean, think even before you know I had children there was always just there's always something else going on right something else to kind of like uh, pull you and kind of like oh you have to see this person oh you got to eat this thing or or or, <laughs> or whatever that's kind of the nature of of, you know, where we're always seeing each other at parties or whatever. So this is exciting. This is fun. No, absolutely. And then there's uh, always like 10 minutes of like, you know, BS talk. It's like, hi, how are you? Like, and it's like, you cut through yeah. that. And then it's, it's like, it's all that. So this is a really fun experience that I'm re I have been really looking forward to. So thank you again for being here. Now let's, let's start welcome. right. Let's start right there. Cause like, you know, you, like I said, ever since I can remember, you've always been such a like positive person, like super, just like radiant. So how yeah. do you, how do you, like, how are you always that way? Like, can you share that with us? Like, how are you always, how do you maintain that spirit? You know, um, I think I've always had it. I think, um, you know, I've always been able to see like rainbows and blue skies and, um, you know, for every person that can come up to me with something that's you know, really sad or upsetting, like there's always a silver lining, um, you know, either it's you learn from it or, or, uh, you know, uh, you grow from it. You, you know, things don't last forever. Like this pandemic is never going to last forever. Um, you know, one of the things that, you know, especially like with being cooped up, was that you, the, the trade-off was that we got more family time. The four of us got more family time. And you don't, uh, during a normal year, you would never get that, that kind of time. So we were kind of forced to kind of like be together um, and find creative ways to um, connect with others. Um, but that's never kind of been a, a problem for me. Like, uh, you know, if, you know, if I was lacking something like, you know, for me, this pandemic, you know, I'm a highly social person. I love being around people. Was, you know, how do I connect with people or where am I gonna connect with people? And, you know, I found it through like my school groups. So, 
you know, I'm like, well, I'm not with my normal crowd of like industry people, who can I connect with? And it was, so I, I joined two school boards uh, with Ilsa School, uh, became a Rome parent. And it was just because I needed to have a social connection that because my industry kind of went to sleep during this period, um, you know, where could I, you know, connect with others? Um, and it's, you know, that's been great. So I think I've always found ways to kind of see silver linings in it's, you know, anytime I hear something kind of sad, I'm like, well, but you have this, there's always something, um, something brighter. Um, one of my favorite, um, like Bible verses is, um, I think it's Philippians 4, 9. Um, and I can't remember off the top of my head, but I remember the, the, the verse. I might have to look it up for you. Uh, but it's always about, you know, like having faith um, and that you got to kind of like stick with it um, and you will survive. You will get through. Um, and that's always kind of carried me through. And that's something that I've always wanted to make sure that my, my girls have that like, you can have a bad day, but doesn't have to be a bad day all day. You can have your feelings. Yes, have your feelings, but don't let it, uh, don't let it ruin you. Don't let it overtake you. One of the things that I think I learned from a boss was like, you are the weather. And that if you have, if you're in a bad mood, people feed off of that. You know, you're like, feel like a tornado. People feel it. They can, it's coming out of your pores. It's like, it's like alcohol. But if you're in a great mood, people feed off of that too. So, you know, if I start my day, I just think, okay, it's going to be a great day, even though I'm tired. Um, and I can bring that and I can smile. And if, you know, even if I am like bone tired from like, you know, a long work, a long work week, then people will feel that people will feel the energy. Um, and they'll feel good because they're feeling that energy coming from me. So like Telsa, you got to be the weather. Um, I think she's starting to learn that, but she still needs to have those feelings first. Alice is, uh, still hasn't quite mastered that yet. Um, you mm -hmm. know, she's only two. Um, but if I can instill that in them, I think they'll be okay. Yeah, that's thank you for sharing that. That's you shared a lot there. And I really want to kind of <laughs> break that, break that, break that down because I think you shared so many key points that, and, and in all honesty, shine, um, not everybody has that positive yeah. spirit that you have. So the reason why I asked that question is that like, if anyone's listening to this, like how can they kind of, you know, do that on their own. And I think you touched on some really good stuff. It's like, there's no matter how grim a situation seems, it's more right. so that there's like, if you look just past that, there's always another silver lining. You said that. And I think that's super important. And regardless of what's going on, there's always something to be grateful for. And you also touched on something I think is really important. It's like nothing lasts forever, you know? So no. just kind of like every no. storm comes to pass. Right. And right. I think that's a really important thing that like, if you just keep that in your mind with any situation, it could really help you shift your perspective. Right. So and I love how you're instilling that in your two girls. And, you know, that's important. The, learn, the earlier they learn that, right, the, the more right. better you set themselves up for life, right? Yeah, because there's always going to be disappointments. Um, there are always going to be bad things that happen. Always, always. Uh, but they don't last. They don't last. Um, and there, there are going to be good things. They're going to be okay things. Um, but the important thing is, you know, having the right attitude about it. Like I could be really crappy about like, it sucks. You know, the city's closed. I'm not really happy with what's happening in the city, but yeah, but I still get to live here. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm still working. I, my kids are healthy. My husband's healthy. He's got yeah. a, you know, everyone in general, my family is okay. You know what? I am grateful for that. That is awesome. That is fabulous. I, there are a lot of things I still miss right now. Um, you know, I miss getting on an airplane. I got an airplane once, um, in September for the day, went down to, went down to a sister hotel for like a day. I was literally there eight hours. <laughs> um, 
and it was my first trip since before I had Alice. And it was like, it was so surreal, but I thought I cannot wait to take my kids on a plane and take them on a trip somewhere um, and, and get us back to, to traveling again. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, it's kind of why, you know, I, I joined this industry was the idea of seeing new things in, in new cities um, and um, bringing, you know, my love for travel to them um, so they can experience it as well. So. And what industry is that, by the way, for the folks that don't know? Oh, yes. I'm in the hospitality industry. So what I tell people is we are in the business of making, uh, we are in the business of making people happy, mm -hmm. you know, and that's like restaurants, that's hotels, that's um, attractions. So I tell people, I also tell people, you know, if you don't love people, this is not the job for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're in the business of people. Everything we do is about making, you know, there, when people come to San Francisco or any other city, New York, London, or whatever destination you live in, you know, your job is to really make them feel welcome, make them want to come back. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and that's everything we do, whether it's, you know, you're the right hotel for them, you're the attraction that they want to go to or, or whatever it's, um, your job is to welcome them and to m serve them, mm -hmm. um, so that they do come back. And so they tell their friends to come back, like, Hey, this is the one city I want to go to. This is the one place I want to go to. Um, and so you're, you're such an ambassador for San Francisco too, cause like, I know that you love the city so much as I do. I'm born and raised. I mean, we could tell by your background, you've got yeah. the, the Golden Gate Bridge right behind you right yep. there, which is, which is, I'm sure that was intentional why you did that because it's such a great city. Um, you know, in saying that, you know, I, I'm curious for you, what about the city do you love the most? Oh, you know, the air. Really? the air. And I tell you this because the air smells different here compared to anywhere else. And I'm super sensitive. You may not know this, but I have a very hypersensitive sense of smell. So you get off the plane at SFO, right? You get into a cab. And whenever I get into a cab after, you know, a, a lot of travel, I roll down the windows, especially as we approach the city, you know, where you get to where it's probably like for Cheryl, there's like a blue pedestrian bridge and then the city comes into view. You're coming in 101 and there's that pedestrian bridge and it says like the cities and whatever. The city comes into view right as you go under that pedestrian bridge. Mm -hmm. I look forward to that view every single time. It doesn't even matter. I'm in my own damn car and I still appreciate it. Right. But it's that, it's that view that says, I'm home. And it's that city Absolutely. skyline. It has mm -hmm. changed so much, you know, in the last 20 years. But my heart skips a beat every time I see it mm -hmm. because I'm like, holy hell, this is my city. I am home. <laughs> um, but the air smells different here. Totally. Um, and you can, and it's like, it's like salt air. It's like eucalyptus and some other yeah. green things, maybe a little bit of cement too. <laughs> <laughs> right. But it's like air here does not smell like smell the same as when you come out of like, Oh, you know, like Oahu in, in, in Hawaii, because, you know, Hawaii is the open air airport, that air smells different. San Francisco air, like I know, I know when I get here. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, 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 it's the way the air smells, or it's the way the air smells when the fog rolls in. So a couple mm -hmm. of days ago, remember we had it was like 70 and I was dying at 70 degrees. And it was Saturday or Sunday. And then the fog started rolling in and the fog was in early and I stood outside and I think I, I posted it on, on Instagram where like I took a video and I was like, okay, hello, Carl. And it was in the air, just <laughs> whenever that fog rolls in, it just cleans up the air and it is just, it's home. I'm like, yep. that's why I live here. And, and for those that don't know, she referred to Carl as Carl the Fog. <laughs> if you're not from San Francisco or the Bay Area, we refer, we, the fog here is well known and it has a name and its name is Carl the Fog. Carl. Carl, Carl the Fog. So I, and you know, I can completely relate to what you're saying because I still, no matter how many times I've seen the skyline coming from like the East Bay, like coming onto the Bay Bridge or taking that exit onto Sixth Street coming from, you yeah. know, from the South Bay, yeah. 
And yeah. like, you just see this, the buildings and you're just like, damn, this is my city. And it's just like amazing. And I appreciate it so much. And I, I can totally relate to what you're saying. And it's, it's one of the main reasons why people come to visit this place all the time. Like you've got a yeah. fantastic background. The Golden Gate Bridge is such a beautiful destination to check out. And we've got so many yeah, other places. And I haven't walked it in years too. So, you know, I want to walk it again. I think the last time I walked it, we were still, we were still dating when, we, when, when, it, when we walked it. Um, but I, I'd love to take, you know, it might be a little frightening for them because it's, you know, it's vibrating or whatever, but you know, <laughs> it'd be a good place to see like a run because it's like one and a half miles each way. Oh, you'll love it. Cause I, uh, actually not too long ago, biked it a few times. We biked from the great highway through golden gate park. Oh, I don't, I don't run. I have bad knees, but if you want to bike, I'll, I mean, if you want to run, I'll bike. <laughs> Or we can walk it. We can just walk fast. That too. That too. We can walk it. I would love it. Cardio is such a great exercise and it's such a necessary exercise. And actually that's a good transitional kind of way to get into that that? for you. I did (laughs) perfect segue because you're a natural at this. (laughs) So let's talk about that. I know you've been posting it a lot on Instagram. Yeah. You're such an avid runner. And I I really want to dive into that because you seem to get so much enjoyment out of it. And it's, it's quite inspiring to see your post because you post some great stuff and I'm just like, damn, like I got no excuse. I got to get my ass into the gym today. So like, I want to know for you, like where did, when did running really become like a part of your daily or your weekly, what, or whatever, tell, tell us about like how you got started, what you love most about it. Let's just talk about it. So let's, so let me go back a little bit. Um, I've always hated exercise, hated it. I hated it with a red hot passion. I never would have been caught in a pair of like spandex or running shoes. I saw, I thought these people were nuts. I thought these people were prime expression, fucking crazy. Um, but it happened last year and my wonderful boss, Emily Nichols, who said, you know, right now it's still about, you know, mental wellness, taking care of yourself. Uh, we're, we, you know, this, we're at a marathon, this is not a sprint. You need to take care of yourself. If you need exercise, do what you need to do to really, uh, you know, focus on you and just, you know, you know, while we're in this really weird, you know, situation. And I kind of took that to heart. And so, you know, I started running in the office um, on a treadmill and found a couple, you know, it sucked and I hated it uh, (laughs) because I felt so out of shape after, um, you know, years of not really doing much physical exercise and just relying on like, oh, I'm active. I take the bus. I'm like, well, I wasn't really taking the bus the last couple of, I was really just, you know, driving so-and-so to school. I'd walk here and there, um, especially after having Alice, I wasn't doing a lot. So, Mm -hmm. you know, I gained a lot of weight with second baby and, you know, being, you know, over 40 was it? Yeah. Over 40 with, uh, with, you know, having Alice, um, you know, the weight didn't come up as fast. So, you know, the combined feeling of just feeling like meh in my own body and having that kind of positive encouragement. And then, you know, a good mom friend, Michelle Weiss down in Long Beach, a college friend of mine, you know, seeing her like go through a body transformation. I'm like, okay, she's got two young kids and she's getting fit and she's thinking of herself. I'm like, okay, I can do this. <laughs> let's, let's, uh, let's start. So yeah, the beginning was kind of ugly of like, okay, let me just do 20 minutes and then 30 minutes. And then after, you know, being endorsed, I'm like, you know what? I kind of want to try this outside. Mm-hmm. Um, and I knew nothing about like, you know, running outside and whatever and like how far I was going. And I'm like, okay, I'll be happy if I just make it a couple blocks. Um, and then I started tracking, you know, with my watch, how far I was going. I'm like, well, maybe we should start mapping around. So start, everything just started building when I could start, when I started building my um, kind of my tolerance for how far I could run and you know, getting the right breathing cadence so that mm-hmm. like, I wouldn't like, uh, lose breath or kind of lose energy. Um, and then I just started getting excited about it. So I started, you know, 
mapping out routes of where I could run so I could, you know, make sure that it was what I felt doing, you know, more than just 30 minutes. So I became, oh, let's map this and then figuring out, oh, which streets are safer to run on? Um, and what times of day do I like to run on? I'm like, uh, I kind of prefer the morning because there's less people versus like mid morning when, you know, everything's awake and things like that. So it, it was a, it was a progression of, mm -hmm. of things. So the running, and then it was looking at my diet because everyone's, you know, as Daniel likes to tell me, my husband, that's so weird saying that husband, <laughs> um, we can, we can talk about that. <laughs> we can talk about that a little later. Uh, but you know, he's like, you can always exercise, but your diet's always been great. I'm like, yeah, my diet's always been good. Cause I love to eat. We all love to eat. Um, and figuring out, well, I'm doing all this exercise, but you got to have like, you, you got to have better eating habits. So mm -hmm. I need like things like the different diets didn't work for me. Um, but he talked to me about like fasting. I'm like, what fasting? What diet is that? So I looked it up and there was a thing called like intermittent fasting. I'm like, oh, I'm like, so you're just not eating. <laughs> I'm like, that might actually work for me because I'm essentially <laughs> sitting at, essentially at a desk job. So I started reading up on intermittent fasting and all mm -hmm. the different ways you can fast. So as of today, I'm probably at, where's my phone? I'm probably over 300 days with intermittent fasting and wow. it works for me. Wow. And do you do that every day or do you give yourself two days off? Because I've uh, no. kind of played around with intermittent fasting. I still do. Actually, I do but... it every day. I just shorten the, on, on the weekends, I just shorten the fast. So I'm on the 12, six, no, wait, wait, is it 12, six, 12, six. No, 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 that's not right. Hold on. I have to look at my app. No worries. Uh, yeah. Because when I was doing it or when I still do it, I actually practice fasting even just to, even if it's not intermittent fasting, sometimes I just, when I'm hungry, I don't give in right away to the hunger just to kind of let my body do what it does and metabolize and just kind of like eat yep. the fat. Cause that's really the science behind it. Right. And how that's supposed to help you. So like what 16, you're doing, eight. what 16, is it? Eight. So I do the 16, eight method. Okay. So What's 16 that? hours of fasting and I eat within an eight hour window. Okay. I do allow on the days that I do um, on the days that I go on like long runs, I do allow like a snack because you can't, do like a 10k run uh -huh. and not have any fuel yeah that's that tough is. that's tough you need some fuel right yeah you definitely need you definitely need fuel so um you know a snack here and there of like you know like a granola bar or a banana for me it does not break the fast mm -hmm. um and i may not be doing that right but your body if you're running around a lot you need a little you need a little fuel. You need something to kind of power you through. So yeah. 16, eight in general is what I do. I, I'll throw in a snack here, here or there, as long as it's not a full meal. And then I'll start my, my essentially my first actual meal is lunch. Well, so today uh -huh, the go lunch ahead. is going to be a little later uh -huh. uh, because I'm talking to you, but not about <laughs> I'm, just, I'm hydrating. So I'm good. Good, good. Well, I mean, the thing I gathered from what you've been saying right uh -huh. here is that like, you know, it was a progression to start with and you've just been tweaking it to kind of yeah. like make it fit your lifestyle. And I think that's yeah. the thing that people can do for themselves. It's like you have to identify how your life is and just kind of like adjust your fitness lifestyle around that, too, and just make it blend, yeah. make it mesh. Right. So, you know, there's ne like, of course, ideally, people would want to like stick to like depending on your goals. Right. They would want to stick right. to like a complete fitness plan. But life just doesn't work like that. Sometimes, sometimes you're going to have to yeah. adjust and you know, like it's okay. And if you make a mistake, you, you know, give yourself the grace and just like really allow yourself to, you know, do it, do it differently next well, time. And now, it's a, now it's like a lifestyle, right? So now that I'm used to being active and now that, you know, I don't always get towards, uh, I don't always get to do a run, um, but I'm doing a lot of walking. So, mm -hmm. because so now that I'm taking both girls to school and I've gotten, you know, now I've, I've, we've taught Ilsa to walk to school, you know, so we walk to school every day. So I, I walk her to school round trip um, is about 20 minutes. Well, that's 20 minutes of exercise of a 45, yeah. you know, 40 minutes a day. And then we pick up, you know, and then in the afternoon we walk to pick her up. I'm like, well, it's easy to accumulate. If you look at, it's not 
if you look at the amount of time of exercise your body needs, say, I want 45 minutes. You don't have to do that 45 minutes in mm -hmm. one stretch. You can have spread it out. So like yesterday um, in my building, I had a lot of vendors. I, I was running around a lot. I ended up doing 24 flights of stairs, seven miles of walking. Um, yeah, it was kind of, it was kind of ridiculous. I, it was like 90 minutes of like combined exercise. And that was in the span of like a 10 hour day. Shit. Yeah. Good but when job. you look at it that way, it's not that bad. It's really, you know, it's great when you can knock out 45, a 45 minute run in one pop, but if you can't do it, if you're breaking it up in little bits. And that's great that you do that. Like, because it's funny because I used to be super lazy like i would always yeah. try to find parking closest to wherever i was going but now i'm like you know what i'll park further because i know i'm getting some extra steps in and it's like yo i'm kind of knocking out two birds with one stone here like anytime i can get a little bit of extra activity i add that so it's just like little by little turns into a lot right and like you just broke yeah. it down you just did what 24 flights of stairs like you're you're looking at it from that angle now where you're just like yeah. wow okay i'm just gonna if i can't make my run today I'm going to make up for it in these little spurts throughout the day. Right. Yeah. You can look at, it's not, it's, if you look at it in little bits, you can break up. So initially, you know, I was looking at, you know, goals. I'm like, Oh, I got to do, you know, 45 minutes. I got to like, I've got to dedicate 45 minutes exercise in like one time. Not necessarily, especially like, I know that when business comes back, I'll have to figure out a creative way to, I'll have to, you know, pivot again. Oh my God. Another word I hate right now. <laughs> says it. Bleeping word pivot. I'll have to, I'll have to adjust. I'll have to shift a little bit. There you go. So I'll have to figure out, I'm like, well, okay, where else can I get a little bit of a walk-in so that, you know, maybe I'm looking at a standing desk versus a sitting desk or, um, you know, maybe it is, I'm just walking everywhere as much as I can. Um, so that, you know, I'm not like married to my car. Like the other day, uh, Tuesday, I was doing a pickup for some nonprofits and it was the most time I've spent in my car. It was like an, over an hour in my car. And it felt so weird being in my car that long. I'm like, ew, get me out of my car. I just want to be outside because Tuesday was so nice. I'm like, I'd rather be outside right now. Uh -huh. uh, but by virtue of the errands, I needed to be in the car. And it was delightful but it's not something I'd rather do. Um, mm -hmm. And it goes back to the whole bit of like, this is why I live in the city. So I don't have to be in my car. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I hear you. Yeah. It's uh, it's interesting when you kind of are in places like that and kind of situations like you won't necessarily ideally want to be in. It's like, what do we do to kind of fill that time nowadays for me? Cause when I get in situations where like, I'm maybe, I'm like, damn, I wish I could be somewhere else. I kind of try to flip it on its side a little bit and try to figure out, okay, what is, why is this happening? You know what I mean? Like maybe there's right. something here that I can kind of utilize this time. Maybe there's something here to learn for it. And I'm just trying to pay attention more. And with that kind of shift that I've kind of implemented, it's really changed a lot for me. Like I posted something on Instagram today where um, it's like, uh, it's from one of my favorite people in the world. He's the late, great Dr. Wayne Dyer. And it's yep. the quote goes, uh, when you change the way you look at things, the, the things you look at change. And it's so true because, you know, there's been plenty of times where I'm like stuck in traffic or maybe I'm in the grocery line, just waiting for a slow person to check out their items. And I'm just like, damn, come looking at the clock and I find myself getting antsy. And I'm like, then I just kind of take a deep breath for a second and kind of calm down. I'm like, okay. Maybe this is happening for a bigger reason. Maybe it's slowing me up because if I'm in a rush, maybe I'm going to go run a red light and I get a ticket or something like that. Or yeah. maybe I can just kind of, maybe I need this time for myself to just really kind of like settle in and be present no matter what's going on. You know what I'm saying? We're, we're in such a rush, rush type of pace nowadays that I find sometimes like maybe life just kind of slows us down for a reason where it's just like, maybe if we don't, it'll, our bodies will break down. You know what I'm saying? So I kind of just try to take it in stride as much as possible now. And I know it's really hard, but it's a practice. And just yeah, like anything, really just like yeah, anything, you get better at it, right? 
Well, and that's what running is kind of done for me. So like, you know, I could be the first mile of a run is always, you know, for me, I don't hit my stride till probably like mile two or like mile three. Mm -hmm. Um, And then it's like, you know, the endorphins start kicking in and it's like, Mm -hmm. oh, this is like heaven. Uh Um, And I'll catch my breath and I'll see like, so where I run, you know, so I'll usually run from like our apartment and I'll go all the way down to like, depending on my mood, you know, um, I'll go all the way down to maybe like six in Lake or something like that. Um, so that's probably about the three mile mark, maybe. Yeah. Or two and a half mile mark. Um, and then coming back, you know, like one of my favorite streets to take back is clay. Cause clay is a, it's basically mostly for pedestrians. They don't, uh-huh. it's like a slow street. Um, but there are parts of clay that, that are on a hill where you get glimpses of like the water in the bay mm. and it just takes your breath away. And I'm like, this is why I do it. Oh uh, yeah. You know, you do it to be, you know, for these little moments of like, you know, you see the sun coming through trees or you catch a glimpse of the Golden Gate Bridge or whatever. And it's like, you know, those aha moments of like, this is your time. You know, your time to just, you know, focus on your body, be alone, no headsets, just you, your breathing um, and the run. And it is, you know, it's delightful when I can get out there um, and go and go for like, you know, a long run. Um, it's kind of awesome. One of the things I started, um, I started doing this month is um, I'm training for Chef Cycle. Chef Cycle is a race uh, that partners with, um, helps raise money for No Kid Hungry um, because there are children that are in America, unfortunately, that are literally going hungry, not going. So it gets um, people in my industry together to, you know, race on Santa Rosa, raise money for this nonprofit. Um, I will not be riding with them in Santa Rosa. But um, because of, the, of, of races that are now, you know, offering flexibility to do things virtually, I will be doing it virtually with them. Uh, so super excited. It's 200 miles over three days. Wow. So, so I need to bike like 66 miles a day. <laughs> to, Wait, what? Uh, yeah, because it's, yeah, it's 66, 67 miles a day. Sheesh. Yeah. Oh my It'll goodness. Good. Oh, that's going to be, that's going to be fantastic. And that's really like, I feel like it's just going to show you what you're capable of. Right. It's such oh, a yeah. challenge. It's, it's a mental challenge more than anything else. Everyone who talks about doing what they call like a double century, like, uh, you know, race wow. head, you know, you know, cycle heads. I'm, I'm watching all the blogs on like, you know, how to stay comfortable, how to stay hydrated. Uh, cause I'll be doing it indoors. Um, cause I'm not going to buy a bike for that. I'm like, I'm not, a, I'm not a bicyclist of uh, buying any stretch, but, um, I thought, I thought it'd be a good endurance, um, a good endurance test. Like, why not? That's I incredible. Have- no, that's yeah. incredible. Now I wanted to ask you something. Um, sure. and I'm, I'm pretty sure I want to revisit what you're talking about right now, because that sounds like such a great cause. And, I wanted to ask you because I hear about it all the time and you kind of referenced it a little bit and I'm, I'm pretty sure that it might, you might've already answered it, but you mentioned like the endorphins kicking in, like when you yeah. kind of hit your stride, is that, yeah. is that what I hear to commonly refer to as the runner's high? Yes, it is. It is. Yes, it is. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just when everything kind of goes in sync, your body's in sync, your breathing is in sync. Um, you know, with everything is, you know, your pace, you're not going too fast. Um, and I'll sing a song, just kind of keep, uh, I'll sing a song to, to kind of keep my, my breathing in pace. And it'll be like a song I sing with the girls. It'd be like, twinkle, twinkle, little star. Or <laughs> something. It, it's, it's gotta be something so simple, but it just kind of keeps you, it's gotta be rhythmic and something easy to remember. Right. Um, or it's a love song because, you know, we're, you know, we're, we're kids of the eighties and nineties and ballads. I'm sorry. They're not great now. They suck. <laughs> they do not make love songs like they used to nope. but I'll pull a song from like the eighties or nineties and I'll sing it. Like, it'll be like a Janet Jackson song and I will sing it as I'm running to keep my breathing going at the wow. pace that I was running. 
Um, and when all those things kind of go in place, it is marvelous. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I ended up doing my 10K race. Um, I did that solo in, it was um, uh, uh, September. Yeah. I did my first, or no, October. Wow. October. Yeah, I yeah, think I, I saw you know. post that and I was I was very happy to see you do that. And it's so cool. You know, I, I'm curious, like, um, and I'm pretty sure it does, but I want to hear it from your standpoint. Um, the running that you do and everything like yeah. that, how does, how does that intertwine with your the rest of your life? Um, like beneficially, you know what I'm saying? Well, I feel like it gives me more, um, you know, if anything, it sets an example for my kids. So I feel like they won't be healthy or want to do healthy things if they don't have that, you know, immediate example of, mm -hmm. you know, I think Ilsa is encouraged to walk to school because she knows that mommy gets dressed in spandex and knows that mommy is always like exercising and always running around. Wow. Um, so if I can teach, uh, if I can be that example for them and live that kind of lifestyle, I can't just do as I say, not as I do. Mm -hmm. you, know, you can't tell them they're like, oh, you have to have a healthy lifestyle, but you eat crap things. Oh, you need to eat your fruits and vegetables, but you don't eat fruits and vegetables. So, you know, the example needs to come from us. We need to be the example for our kids. Uh, we need to live the truth that we want them to have, you know, like we talk about dental care at home. They just had their dental appointments. Um, and, you know, we tell us every day, you know, you got to floss every day because you don't want to have the issues that mommy and daddy have. I said, because, you know, mommy and daddy both have, you know, periodontist and we both have had teeth, you know, removed and, you know, mommy got braces and you don't want braces. Braces are not like awesome to get braces are because your teeth are screwed up. <laughs> <You know>? So, <laughs> Like, this is not a cool thing to have. I should have had these years ago. No, because my teeth aren't straight. We want you to have great teeth. So we all practice. We all floss. There's, you know, the water pick. There's mouthwash. And it's, you know, teaching them good habits, you know, having those good habits ourselves, whether it be through, you know, um, work ethic, mm -hmm. diet, um, our relationships, how we treat each other, Correct. you know, um, our faith. Um, and, and that kind of thing, you know, that's the stuff that they'll pick up on. And so, you know, I think a lot of her wanting to walk to school is because mommy's getting healthy. You know, I try not to, you know, have words say things like, you know, fat or skinny, uh, you know, you know, I wanted to have body positive word images and, and thoughts and not to kind of have the same issues that, you know, I kind of had uh, growing up. Um, we need to change that script for the, you know, that generation so that they understand this is, you know, way my body is shaved, this is healthy, you know, using words like, oh, you want to be healthy versus weak, you want to be strong versus weak, uh, versus like, oh, you're skinny or you're mm -hmm. chunky, you know, let's take some of that, let's take some of that negative, uh, those negative body image words out of the picture and fill them with things that are, you know, how do we want our kids, whether they're boys or girls non-binary what we what we'd like them to have what words would fill them with joy mm -hmm. um and so that that becomes part of the lexicon and so that they can spread that out with themselves like oh let's not talk about fat and thin let's talk about healthy and strong and you know let's talk about being kind and not being mean mm -hmm. um and so those are the things we're trying to um introduce to them and that's kind of how like running and having this lifestyle has kind of been like you know um, I sent our cousin Anna a box of oranges because, uh, you know, I know she's busy and I'm like, you know what, I'm going to send you a box of sunshine. <laughs> <So I laughs> there you it. go. And I'm like, it's winter and I'm all about, you know, eating local and I'm like, it's citrus season. Everybody should have an orange. In fact, I think I have an orange on me somewhere. <laughs> I do. I'm not joking. I have an orange. I believe it. There you go. And I eat orange every day. I'm like, there's something about like oranges and citrus. So like, um, like Meyer lemons are in season every January around my birthday. And so I make lemon bars or I make something with Meyer lemons. Um, and that brings me a lot of joy because they are local, they're California, uh, and they're only in season from like 
January to like February or something like that. Mm -hmm. And it's, I mean, it's so awesome. Other people have to pay an arm and a leg for them. We do not because mm -hmm. they're local. Mm -hmm. So, hey, wow. citrus. Because I just got to say that I'm so grateful to be related to you because you are just literally your name says it all. You are a ray of sunshine. Your response to my question was so spot on and I couldn't agree more because, you know, when you are doing it for other people, especially your kids, right? Like it's like it's like a different fire that's lit within you and you want the best. Every parent that loves their kids wants yeah. the best for their kids and the best way to teach people is to lead by example, in my opinion. I really believe that. Words can, you know, make an impact. But you got to love yourself too, though. Don't forget. That's if you fact. don't love yourself, and I say this to, you know, even before, before I was a mom, um, and before, you know, I was somebody's partner, you know, we all have to love ourselves. It's like the air, it's like, I, I love that analogy that they said uh, with the airplane. You have to take care of yourself. You have to put the mask on yourself before yep. you put the mask on others. Mm -hmm. You have to both like, there's nothing. Self-care is self-care. Self-love is so important. You cannot take care of others. Mm -hmm. If you don't take care of yourself, you've mm -hmm. got to love yourself. How can you teach others, your children, your siblings, you know, your parents to love, the, uh, you know, you can't teach them to love themselves. If you don't love yourself, That's right. you really have That's... to love yourself. Even when you hate yourself, you got to love yourself. Mm -hmm. and so spot on. Oh my gosh. I never recognized the importance of that up until fairly recently, to be quite honest with you. And once you yeah. really figure that out, oh my gosh, because when you love yourself, you treat yourself like someone you love, right? You're not going to yeah. do damaging stuff to your body. You're not, you're going to give yeah. yourself good advice and you're going to treat yourself like someone you love. Like when you love someone, you don't want them to be doing harmful stuff to themselves. So when you learn to love yourself, you're giving that to yourself. And I love what you said because all the stuff that you're doing for yourself, it's showing your girls that, and it's helping them instill self-love at such an early age. And that's going to yeah. boost self-esteem, self-confidence, yeah. self-worth. And they're going to yeah. feel like they can do anything in this world, which they can, you know, and, right. I, and you empower them that way. And that's a beautiful, yeah. beautiful thing. It's a, gorgeous thing especially when they throw it back at you so like you know the other day Ilsa and I were taking a photo you know because periodically on our way to school like oh let's get a photo and then she's like mom your hair I'm like what about my hair it's in the way of the photo it's like why don't you cut it and I'm like I'm like you don't know this mommy used to have short hair I said but mommy's not gonna have short hair anymore <laughs> <laughs> But it was just, you know, it's, it's that really uh, like awareness of like, you know, I want to see myself and like that really wonderful self-awareness of like, I'm proud to be me, mommy. And love it. I love that. I love seeing that. And I'm like, you know, I want her to continue having that, you know, that self-assured, she's got a strut in her step. Mm -hmm. She will, you know, pop a pose and that, that self-confidence at, you know, for her to have it like six and a half is so awesome. Um, and I love, I, I love, I, I love seeing it. Um, you know, and Alice is going to have, you know, a different kind of, of awesomeness, her um, own individuality, right? Everybody's yeah. their own. Individuality. Um, and I'm, I'm excited, excited to see where that goes right now. It's the, um, it's the, I'm very physical and I am fearless and I will climb everything. kind of person. <laughs> she has that already yeah. innately in her huh? oh yeah she this child has no fear <sighs> she climbs and climbs she uh she's climbing on top of tables she is um yeah she is a child i prepared for the first time around but didn't get <laughs> <laughs> so she caught you off lot. guard <laughs> oh yeah i was I, I was like wow I was not ready for that, uh, but it's exciting nonetheless because it's it's a different kind of uh, she um, Alice has a different kind of energy, yeah, uh, than Elsa has. Uh, you know, but I love seeing it, um, and I can't wait for that to kind of uh, that to blossom and see where that see where that goes. But I hope that fearlessness sticks with her too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You guys, you guys, I if there was ever a right way to parent, it sounds to me like you guys are doing the right way. Everything that you're saying to me, like I couldn't agree more. And it's like, 
I've seen your girls. They're such beautiful girls. They're fun to be around. And literally, like, that's a testament to you guys, you and Daniel. Like, you, like no, everything you're saying you. right now, Shine, is like, wow. That is like, oh, my gosh. That is if, you know, God willing, if I were to have kids in the future, that is how I want to infuse my kids with that self-love, that self-confidence, really that that belief that they can do anything. You know what I'm saying? And um, well, it seems and, to me that's you what you're about, doing. You think about it culturally, right? Like we you know, in the Filipino culture, there's not a lot of talk about like self-love. It's, it's hard work and you got to like go through pain. Mm -hmm. uh, there's Suck a it lot. Up, yep. of, I almost feel like it's like, I almost, I almost feel like suffering is innate in our culture. Um, and it doesn't have to be that way. You know, we, yes, you have to work hard, but you don't, you don't uh, have to, it doesn't have to be painful. Um, and you don't have to suffer in silence. We, you know, that brings me something that's very near to dear to my heart is, you know, that we've been kind of, hind we, we haven't actually mentioned uh, verbally is, uh, you know, mental wellness. Um, you know, we don't talk about mental strength, uh, you know, in our culture, it's more of like you suffer in silence. You don't talk about it. Uh, but it, we, it, it needs to be addressed. We need to talk about health. We need to talk about mental wellness and that it's, uh, it's okay. You don't have to, you don't have to, um, you know, be the strong and silent. It's okay to have feelings. It's okay to experience them. It it's does part of being you, human. It's part of being human. Yeah. It doesn't make you weak. It makes you, uh, it makes you real. And once you experience them, you can overcome them. You can, you'll feel better. You'll feel stronger. Um, you know, it's important, you know, I think what you're doing is important uh, uh, to bring a, bring a face to it. Um, and it's important, whether it be, uh, you know, you talk about things like depression or, you know, overcoming sadness or just, or, or dressing anger. Um, that's all part of mental wellness. Um, and we all need to know that that's okay. Mm -hmm. um, and that's okay to uh, work through. Yeah. And I would add that it's actually brave because when you're yeah, taking the steps to like deconstruct your past and really kind of look at those toxic elements that we kind of grew up with and choose to be like, nope, I'm not doing this no more. And not only am I not yeah. doing this, I'm going to, I'm going to attack it head on. I'm going to address it and I'm going to accept it as well as be like, be at peace with it. But then I'm going to move forward from that point. And then you're at a place where you have two little girls that are looking at each and every move that you do. Right. So yeah. like, they're going to pick up on that. Just like you kind of described earlier, like when you're in a bad mood, people pick up on it. When you're in a good mood, people pick up on it. The yeah. girls are going to see exactly what you do. And it's like, we do have these choices every single day of like how you Absolutely. do it, where you wake up and you're like, it's going to be a great day. No matter what's thrown my way, I believe in yeah. my ability to adapt and adjust. Right. So yeah. it's, it's really extremely important to do that work. And the more we kind of ignore it, the more it festers, the more it gets worse. Yes, and the it more, does. Right. It ages you because it ages you, mm -hmm. it ages you. And, and it just, you know, it'll start to eat at you physically, you know, mm. like people, you'll get ulcers or whatever, when you don't deal with things, it, um, you know, and I, I've seen, you know, you hear it from friends and uh, people that you're close to where, you know, you hear them struggling and it's like, you know, you got to keep fighting. You can fight it. You can overcome it. Um, and it's, and, and it's okay. Admit that you have a struggle um, and move on. You know, you brought up about, uh, you know, Daniel, my parenting. And one of the things that we, um, uh, always, you know, kind of come to uh, one of the many things we've kind of learned together is that you don't have to agree on anything, on everything. There are going to be things that we don't agree on, and that's okay. You mm -hmm. can agree to disagree. Mm -hmm. um, and that's really hard for people. Like, what do you mean? I'm like, you can agree to disagree. You can get to a point in a discussion with someone and say, you know what? Okay, I accept your argument's valid and I accept that. I'm still gonna be on this side. And that is okay. That is always gonna be okay mm -hmm. in a relationship. And if you can get to that point in a relationship 
and even how you manage your children. Because there are certain things that he and I will be things that in general were 95% we agree on. And there's that 5% we probably don't. Okay, I agree to disagree with you on, on those things. And that <laughs> is it is highly underrated, the idea, the concept of agreeing to disagree. But I tell you, if and when you are with a person long-term, my friend, you will appreciate that I said that. It will serve you well. I can, I can, I can see that. No, I, I can see how that would be just for the sake of peace sometimes, right? Because I think a lot of times we get into arguments because we want to be right. We want to, you know, we want to make our point and like this and that. But sometimes it's not worth the peace, especially in the harmony between a relationship that you guys yeah. always got to remember to love the, the foundation of love. It's not about always being right. It's not about always wanting to have your way. Yes. Yeah, sometimes as a human being, we want our way and we're not always going to get our way. But when you guys are in a committed relationship and you guys talk things out, you see eye to eye and you find a way to get back to ground zero where you guys are just like, you know, eye level, right? That's, that's important. Because sometimes those arguments, and I've been in relationships where arguments have, you know, spilled over and gotten really bad. And, um, you know, you say some things and it just compounds and it gets worse. Right. So I love how you say that. Sometimes you have to just be like, okay, we're not really making any ground here. Let's agree to disagree. You know what I'm saying? And uh, put it at rest. So I can see that. <laughs> yeah. It's awesome. Um, you know, it took us 20. It'll be 21 years that we've been together this year. Wow. Yeah, isn't that wild? That's wild. Years. That's wild. And let's 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 kind of that's a another perfect segue because <laughs> you've been you, you've been in San Francisco now for prior to recording, you told me 22 years. It'll be 22 years this August. Okay, talk about that journey of you know where you came from and then like settling into San Francisco. And let's talk about that because I think. You know, when I first met you as a kid, like it was like when we first kind of started moving into Carl Street, if I remember. Yeah. Correctly. yeah. So let's talk about um, that. You know what? And I have to credit your Lala for this because, you know, when I think of like, you know, my childhood memories, there's my Lola Sally, um, you know, my grandmother, and then her youngest sister, your Lola, Tita Remy, um, and these really strong, like awesome women, you know, and my maternal grandmother um, on my mom's side. And it's, I always, you know, when my dad was, you know, my dad is in the Air Force and he's a civilian employee, lifelong military guy. We'd come down from Marysville, come into, you know, we'd come down for the weekend um, coming to San Francisco and, you know, my memories of like, you know, staying at the house on, 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 on Santiago street, mm -hmm. staying with, you know, and like waking up in the morning and coming downstairs and she would have apple cinnamon oatmeal for me and spending lots of time talking to Tita Remy and these memories. And then like, when I went to college, when I first started going to college here in 97 and, and you know, my first round of university at, you know, USF and, you know, going to her house and then talking about like, you know, wanting to like live in the city and, you know, lots of my memories of me coming back. There was always something about the city that kind of just uh, felt like home to me. You know, at some point that like, I wanted to like, San Francisco always felt like the big city to me and, you know, come here, live here. Um, and then, uh, you know, 2000, I was living in the UK with my parents, just, you know, why not go to the UK uh, when, a, when a scholarship at USF didn't work out? Um, and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna finish school here. I'm gonna live here, um, you know, applied at SF State. And then, you know, it, it, it started with, you know, my undergrad SF State. Um, and never left. So, <laughs> you know, it's been kind of an amazing journey. I never thought I'd be here this long or I never thought past it, you know, I'm like, oh, I'm just gonna live here. Um, you know, finished my degree at SF State, as I get, go Gators. I had to put <laughs> that out there, go SF State, go Gators. That's their mascot, never see it. <laughs> um, 
but it was a great school to be a part of because it's a commuter school. Like people don't live on campus, you know, lived in like Presidio because a good portion of the dorms were covered in mold. So they had to like lease out some space in Presidio, um, you know, and that was, you know, that was a lot of fun. Um, and then, you know, looking for a job and a friend told me about Starbucks. So I remember getting off Muni, climbing up the fourth street stairs and the first Starbucks I saw was on fourth and market. And I applied at fourth, I applied at the Starbucks on fourth and market and I applied at the gap on Powell street. I got job offers from both. A gap was going to offer me more because I'd worked for them previously, but I wanted free coffee. <laughs> so I went to Starbucks and Daniel does not remember, but he was actually working the bar when I, when I went in for an application. Um, and I thought, oh, this would be kind of cool to work at it, you know, get free coffee. <laughs> and you walked away with more than free coffee in this one. You walked away with more than free coffee. So, uh, yeah, so it, it's just been this, you know, wonderful journey of, you know, living here, living in the, uh, you know, the city I've always loved. And then, you know, when we got together and, you know, we thought about getting a place together, looking at different neighborhoods and we want to be close to where we worked. We didn't mind commuting to school. Um, and the neighborhood that we live in. So we, you know, we live in Japantown. Um, you know, we're in our third apartment in this neighborhood, but you know, we've lived in this neighborhood since 2003. Mm -hmm. wow. Um, so yeah, it has been what, no, yeah, it'll be 19 years that we've lived in this neighborhood. Um, and I can't think of living in another neighborhood. This mm -hmm. is my neighborhood. Like this whole community is my neighborhood. Your, your daughter's middle name is Octavia. Come on now. It is. Well, see, that's part of her first name. So yeah, that's kind of how I picked out her. That's how I picked out the name. I looked outside and I'm like, I kind of like that name, but I like it as a, like a second name, not yeah. as a first name. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that, I mean, I came up with a name that was part of her name. That part of her name came first and then Ilsa came later. <laughs> uh, so... Yeah, it, it's been an amazing journey to be here mm -hmm. um, as long, you know, my career be based here, um, you know, downtown, um, you know, grad school here. I, I can't think of living anywhere else. Although, you know, I have a soft spot for New York. Um, I love New York City. Mm -hmm. uh, but can I live there? Mm, I can have a flat there, but I can live there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but what's there not to love? But as of late, there's been a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and, that, and that is another beautiful segue because, uh, well, first and foremost, I said this earlier because you are such an ambassador for the city. You know, like you always support the small businesses. You're always promoting like really new cool places, like great restaurants, because we have such a amazing food scene over here. We have so yeah. many cool shops at your areas. I love it. Japantown area is one of my favorite pra yeah, places Japan to go Town in the city. Somewhere is so awesome. Oh my God. I, I will say this because I need, I need a shout out to like the Filipino food scene. Hot damn, it's getting exciting. It is getting exciting to, to see Filipino food have the kind of excitement um, that other kinds of cuisine have always um, had. You know, like we're seeing like, you know, shout out to, you know, my sister hotels, uh, restaurant, um, Abaca, um, at the Kimden Alton, yep. um, you know, Francis Eng is doing amazing things for, uh, for Filipino food there. You've got chef Reina in Brisbane, uh, who is veganizing Filipino food, but she makes that food look good. I have not been down to a restaurant yet, but I got to get down there, uh, mm -hmm. because, you know, she makes spam fried rice look awesome and it's all vegan. Wow. She makes Tosina look delicious and it's all vegan. Mm -hmm. Like she is like, it kills me. And then you got like um, in American Canyon, you or yeah, American Canyon, you've got uh, Le Paris Artisan, the, the French bakery that's run by a Filipino guy or and doing, you know, like ube croissants and things like that. Ooh, so that we're seeing, I know, oh my God. Oh my, ube got, croissants? I know he's, he's done something with Ube up there. I've missed him. Wow. But yeah, like, so I love seeing, you know, more people learning about Filipino food that's beyond, that's beyond like, you know, uh, Fun Sit and Lumpia. 
mm-hmm. and adobo. Yeah. The Philippine, you know, our culture and our food is so much more diverse than totally uh, than just those things that the people know us for. Our, you know, that there are, you know, we all we come in all different shades of brown and totally, <laughs> you know, all those kinds of things. It's not just like you know, you're from Manila or, you know, oh, you're, or from like or, or, or whatever. There's a lot, um, especially for like, you know, our generation where we're, you know, you're not, um, you know, you're kind of like second generation. Like you were born here. I was born in the Philippines, but you know, I'm not like, you know, I'm more American than I am like from there. Mm-hmm. Um, so I love seeing this renaissance of people getting excited about some Same. of the flavors coming out. You know, like Eater Eater SF was talking about like Uba is a big food trend. I'm like, no, dude, Uba's always been around. Come on now. You it's guys just are just now, catching just on now. now. <laughs> just now Uba is just now sexier because you yeah. see it at Trader Joe's. Yeah. And shout out to shout out to Senior Seasig, Sarap yep. Shop. You know, they're doing yep. big things. Um Kapwa Gardens. Kapwa there's Gardens. a there's a spot in the mid, like on fifth and mission, I believe it's yeah. a vegan Filipino joint too. Yeah. Um, I forget the name of it, but my sister has some really, really great words about it. She said she's been there several times. I'll have to, uh, find out what that is, but yeah. yeah and then there's, uh, then there's a lady in, in, uh, Oakland that's doing Filipino stuff. So it's, it's great to see the, to see that Filipino food. I feel like it's finally getting its due. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the stuff that we've known for years, uh, but it's great to see it finally getting into totally. the other. Couldn't agree more. You know, like, and also uh, shout out, shout out to some of the older establishments like Irma's on Mission, and you know, like uh, some of the places out here where I'm at in Daly City. It's like so many, so many places, and I just love that the work that they're doing because they're not only putting out good food, but they're making it more kind of um, they're bridging the gap between us and a lot of other cultures to really I kind agree. of offer the foods and just really kind of expose our food a little bit more, give us a little bit more exposure so that um, we become more widely palatable. And I think uh, me and Jordan actually talked about that in our last episode and Jordan shout out to our cousin, Jordan. He's a, he's a chef. He's in the industry and our uncle Ernie, we have, we have a lot of chefs in our, in our family. You are a big, obviously a big food fan. I've seen you post some, some really delectable looking foods, uh, especially baked goods. You know what I mean? So um, yeah, that's, it, it's, it's incredible. Like food itself is such an experience. And it, cause I think that's something you and I share in common. We, yeah, we really enjoy absolutely. it for the experience. Like, of course the taste and you know, all the, all the different neurons, it fires off in our pleasure center in our minds and stuff like that. But like, it's the experience of sitting down with people that you're with <laughs> and really just like enjoying like the different layers and the different yeah all these different things it's the experience it's an art form well and it's start to finish right like i look at it like the way i look at it like a hotel stay like every single point where where either people hear about the restaurant to the things like you know the silverware um and i remember i went on a double date with our cousin joel and his then girlfriend catherine um you know we did a double date together and we went to nova into visadero and nova's awesome love great Nova. place love that place fabulous a great ambiance and i was looking at the plates and then i was looking at the silverware I'm like what are you doing I'm like i'm getting silverware like i kind of want to see the quality of silverware it's kind of become my like it was like this quirky thing i've always kind of had but you know i'll look at the plates i want to see where they're made and i'll look at the silverware and seem like is it cheapy silverware or they actually pitch money for it um well, but that's it, sorry to cut you off, but that's something right there that like I feel like has been highlighted throughout this episode is that you just appreciate the little things so much because like you you look at the details, the attention to the details, like yeah. even as you were describing when you're running, you're you're looking at the sun peeking through the trees. Yeah. And they're like things that like there's always something to be appreciative about, even if it's something super small. Right. So sorry to cut you off, but I just had to no, say, no, it. no, it's all good. It's just it's you know, you want to, you know, with, you know, whatever restaurant, whatever food you, you, you know, you want to be immersed in it. Right. Um, and it's one of those, yeah, you just want to be immersed in it. You want to feel it. And it it could be like, whether you're eating something outside, like barbecue, something that's super messy or like, you know, like down Pacifica, lose luncheonette where it's only outdoors. There are a few indoors, but why would you want to be indoors over there anyways? Uh, but the experience of like, 
oh, you're, you're eating something messy and it's delicious and you got the wind in your hair and it's fabulous. Or there's like the time, there's time for like, uh, like fine dining and where the fine dining will extend to when you go to the restroom and they've got like the nice towels versus like really nice napkins. <laughs> you know, it's, 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 it's details where it counts and where it like matters because you want to be able to walk away and like, holy crap, that was wonderful. But you can have a wonderful experience at your neighborhood restaurant, um, like here in Japantown, like we go to um, Osakaya uh, SF, which is kind of like a Jap Japanese style diner. They have a little bit of everything, but they know us as a family. They know Ilsa, they know Alice. We go in there and it's like, hi Ilsa, hi Alice. You know, you're treated like, you're kind of treated like family or there are a couple of places um, like on Fillmore, we go to Molly Stones and they know Daniel and me from, you know, the neighborhood. I'm like, I haven't seen anyone. I'm like, yeah, cause I got kids. <laughs> uh, but just that like you know we're you know that very cheers kind of like experience I'm like there are places I go to because that's why I go you mm -hmm. go because you feel like you're home mm -hmm. um, um and and those are places that you pocket and those are places that you'll you know uh continue to give your business you know one of the things that we saw that I thought was really wonderful with the pandemic was that everyone stuck to their neighborhoods um, there's a great article in SF Gate a couple, I think it was a year or two ago where they talk about how during pandemic Clement Street just thrived. Mm. You know, they didn't have like the restaurant closures because everybody was staying close to where they lived. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was so wonderful. Like community, there was something to be said about your community, your bubble, yes. and what that bubble looked like to you. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and I looked like for us, like what was our bubble? Our bubble was our school, you know, our neighborhood, all the, the grocery stores, the people that we know, like we've been going to the Safeway and Webster forever. I know three or four of the cashiers. Um, and, you know, they know, they now know our girls. And it's just, you know, that awesome sense of community. Sometimes you, you get that when you live in a city. You don't always get that when you live in suburbia because you're so disconnected. Mm -hmm. um, and that is one of the things I've always loved about the city of just, you know, I, after I drop off Ilsa, um, and we, we walk, either she gets recognized, someone calls her, hi, Ilsa, from their car, <laughs> or someone lays me, hi, good morning. <laughs> and I'm like, this is awesome. This mm -hmm. is why we live here. Uh, this mm -hmm. is why we live in this neighborhood, and this is our, our community. It's and home. It's home. It's home. It's home, and, you, and, you, and that, that's the kind of thing that takes time to build, and, but you, and you can't put a price tag on it, mm -hmm. even with all the yucky things that have happened in the last couple of years. I mean, you and I, like, I don't feel like that's an entire podcast unto itself. <laughs> so, you know, let us talk about some things we don't like. <laughs> right, right. Uh, but it's still home. Because yeah. for, for what, for, for what it, for all the crappy things that we've all had to deal with the last couple of years, there's been so much good that's come out of it. Totally. There's been, you know, we now realize how important, you know, physical, unfortunately, <laughs> physical health mm. and mental health is, and, you know, small business, um, community, all those words that were kind of like, okay, you knew about it. But you didn't certainly focus on it totally. until now. I want to. I want to add something that I actually think is an underrated um, blessing that kind of came from this whole pandemic, and and it ties in with the food scene. But I love the outdoor parklets in San Francisco. I, do too. I like I do too. like some of them are just the way they're set up are just amazing because you know it's it's you have your own private little booth. Like obviously, like yeah. on the on the nice days, they stand out even more. It's harder to kind of like sit outside when it's cold and rainy and stuff like that. But sure. when you have those like really nice days and you want to be out in the sun, like you were describing it's earlier, nice. like when you get the wind and you got the sun, yeah. it's, it adds to the experience. It's like a whole new element. And it's something that I just le learned to appreciate so much more. And it doesn't look like it's going anywhere. So, because a lot of businesses spend a lot of money on that stuff. So, you know, I, yeah, I really appreciate that stuff. I agree with you. I really love the parklets, um, you know, I think it was, um, you know, for some restaurants, I feel have uh, taken that a little too far by taking up a little too much curb. Uh, <laughs> they made the smart seats a little too uh, narrow. And, and our parking's always been tough over here, that's for sure. So it right. just makes parking's it a little bit tougher. Like, yeah. But for some, like, 
you know, like we have some in Japantown, these outdoors, you know, I'm like, well, it's not blocking off traffic. It is delightful. I had lunch yesterday with uh, a client who's become a good friend of mine. She's been with me through, oh my goodness, I've known her since I was at the vintage court. So like four hotels ago. Wow. And we've become good friends. Um, but we, we had lunch at, at Hoshinoya here in the plaza. And it was like, how awesome was it to like sit outside in Japan town, have lunch. And it was a beautiful sunny San Francisco day. I posted a picture of it and I thought like, never mind, you know, like 20 years I've lived here. You could do that before, before 2019, but before the pandemic, you, none of these restaurants had outdoor seating mm -hmm. and now they do. And it's delightful. Like, why wouldn't you want to have lunch outside when right. the weather's nice? Why right. would you want to be indoors? It's so much nice. Get that vitamin D, get that sun on your face. It you go. feels good. There you it's go. Delightful. And it's little stuff like that, that can really help us fill our cup, right? Because we're so busy all the time. Every one of us has stuff yeah, that we got going on in life and little things like that can really keep us at a, you know, with, with our cup full, like I said, and, and I firmly believe you cannot pour from an empty cup. You got to do these little things. Yep. You got to soak in life as much as you can in order to give because life can be demanding and it can ask a lot from you. So it's important. You take the time like you do to run, to enjoy the little things and just appreciate because that, that fuels you, right. That allows you to give more. And especially in your right. industry where you're having to deal with a high volume of people and really in a people facing type of yeah. atmosphere, you know what I'm saying? Like that, that demands a lot. Yeah, it, it, it does. But when you love the city, like, like we do, when, you know, it becomes second nature. Like right. when someone asked me, I remember before we closed, you know, Oh, you know, where do you like to eat? I'm like, you can't ask me that. I remember a, a job interview question was like, what are your favorite restaurants? I'm like, are you serious? <laughs> like, so like too many to choose I, from. I, I said, I can't answer that. What do you mean you can't answer? I'm like, because it just depends on my mood. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Um, there, there are, you know, I tell people there is food and there are things to do for, for every budget. It's not just the high end stuff. Um, and it's not just the quick serve stuff. There is excitement um, and um, merriment and joy for you know for every kind of person um, in the city. You just you, need, you just need to be open to it um, and and have fun and be and and you know it's not going to be like what you want at home. I always tell people if you come from like state country, where don't come here and ask me for a steak. Right, right. come on. You know, eat something that you can't get at home. Right. So it's like when I go down to Texas and I was at, you know, my mom's side of the family, it's like, oh, what do you want? I'm like, okay, I want Mex, I want Tex Mex, I want steak, barbecue, uh, all that. I want yeah. Southern food. Yeah, I want Texas barbecue because there's a difference between Texas barbecue and Southern barbecue. Um, that is what I want. And, you know, like, or I want breakfast tacos because that's not big in here in Northern California because Southern California is very different from Northern California. We're very prideful. Let's get that straight. <laughs> There's a big difference between Northern California and Southern California. That's a fact. Um, uh, but that's what it is. You go somewhere to experience something that is unlike what you have. Oh, yeah. We got so many options and so much diversity. We're a huge melting pot. You can literally... Oh my gosh, there's so many different cultures that are just- Well, just where your mom is. I mean, like Irving, you know, that whole stretch is like, hello, United Nations of food. Oh my God. It was such a blessing growing up in that neighborhood. And I, you know, I, I, I still am over there all the time. And just like you were describing, you know, that neighbor, everyone, like most people over there know us, especially the established restaurants that have been there for a long time. You know, Santung, Pasquale's, yeah. Gordo's, all those guys, you know, they- they know us, you know what I'm saying? So, and yellow submarine, which is one of my yeah. favorite, uh, sandwich shops in the city. Actually, and I still haven't had a sandwich from there yet. What you got to <laughs> You got to bring your girls out there sometime, get a pastrami sandwich or a steak and cheese. They don't sandwich. like sandwiches. They oh, okay. like, right. And they're like, right. <laughs> hey, that's fine. You You're ask, in a perfect you place. Ask, you, you can ask your Lala about that because you try to feed them spaghetti and you know, it also is perfectly fine having leftover adobo. <laughs> hey you're in the perfect place because japan town has an abundance oh, of, yeah. of we are, Asian restaurants. Uh, it is it is heaven for uh 
for Elsa, you know, like there's not a day that we don't spend at Nagia stocking up on noodles. <laughs> That's so awesome. That's so awesome. Wow. Cause this has honestly been such a fantastic conversation. And I know that you're, uh, you've got other priorities, so I don't want to take up too much of your time. And I've been just been having a I've lot of fun. A I- more. We can probably go. We can, I, I've got another like five or 10 minutes if you want to go. Yeah, perfect. That's so, that's. I feel yeah. like that's the perfect amount of time to kind of wrap things up and give wrap you some space. Up. Yeah, be, give you some space here to talk about anything that you feel like we didn't get a chance to talk on that you might have like had in your mind that you wanted to touch on. Ooh, <laughs> I don't know. Do you have any questions for me? I'm sure you do. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, you know, most of most of what I do is conversational based, which we've really yeah. kind of touched on. Um. I know we touched I mean, up on a lot. So, I was kind of thrilling where we yeah, went. Yeah, no, no. We, I think we, we, we covered a lot of topics and I think there's a lot that one can gather from this episode. You, again, your energy is, is if we can bottle that up and just sell it to people <laughs> so that they can <laughs> infuse it because you honestly, like ever since I can remember have always been that way. Now, I guess here's a, here's a good question. What is your favorite thing about being a mother? I know it might be in the same category of like, how, what is this? What's your favorite restaurant, right? But like, if you could yeah. pick, pick, pick top three things of being, you know, favorite of being a mother. Um, see one seeing the world through their eyes. Um, so to see childhood through their eyes. Uh, two, um, I love that I'm in a position to empower them. Um, and because they're, they're, they're females, um, that's kind of exciting to, uh, to like, uh, have the opportunity to raise strong females and, and empower them to, to believe, uh, that they can do anything and be anything and not let, you know, anyone tell them any different. Um, three, um. I think it's just fun. It's been, it's, it's more fun than I thought it would be uh, mm-hmm. because I was not, you know, you can ask anybody. Mother was not a title. I would say that I was going to be aspired to, mm. um, you know, every, some people say like, Oh, I can't wait to be a mom. I was never one of those people. Um, so that feeling for me came a little later. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I'm, I'm a big believer. Like it doesn't ever have to come to you. Some people say, well, don't you want children? When do you want children? Aren't you getting old? I mean, <laughs> It's a very, cause, can I tell you? You know, it's true. Everyone asks a woman over a certain age, oh, when are you gonna have kids? Especially when you've been in a long-term relationship um, like I've been in. Yeah. Like, don't you want kids? Don't you want to get married? And I'm like, why does that need to be natural progression for any single woman? Oh. I can imagine that how annoying that could be. Like, gosh, like my, you know, own, like, my why, own business. Why, Damn. why does why you know why does a woman have to get married? Why does a woman right? You know why does she have to have children? Why, why does is that the assumption? To, why is that the assumption? Well, why does it? Why does a woman have to have that in order to feel complete? It you know what completes one person is gonna, is not going to be the same that what there you go. Other. You know, and that's okay. So you know, I just had to you know, kind of ignore that kind of, because there's a cultural expectation too. Totally. Because so many people, so many of, you know, our parents' generation, you know, they got married and they had kids right away. That's right. just what people did. Right. But for me, the focus has always been, I'm going to live in the city and, you know, God bless Tita Remy, your Lala, because she always believed that I was going to come back um, and live here. So, you know, I always knew you were going to live here. <laughs> You're never gonna leave. You're never gonna live in the Berks. You're gonna live here. <laughs> she she could tell you loved it from Jump Street, basically. She really did since I was since I was little. So God bless her because she always just knew, um, and I always appreciate that she believed it um, and believed believed in me the way she believes in our each of our potential. Mm. Um, that's always always been her spirit. I've always loved that. So mm. uh, yeah, I, I I think you know the desire to be a mom came a lot later, but you know, after I became a mom, it's like, okay, okay. I'm not going to be just that mom. I'm going to be the mom that's going to do this, 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 and this. Um, Mm -hmm. And now I am kind of like, yes, I am that mom. I am that mom, uh, you know, that people know me at school and um, you know, that's involved and that's, that's present, but I enjoy that. I enjoy that. You know, it's, it's kind of, 
it's an extension of who I am. That, mm-hmm. that social bit of like, yes, I'm not just being a person who just cuts the check. That's just not my, that's not my MO. My MO is yes, I'm going to be involved. Um, you know, I want to know what's happening. How can I support, um, how can I support these things? Um, and, you know, it's exciting. And, and I hope that my girls realize that, you know, I'm as invested um, everything about them um, as much as they need me to be. So they know that I, I'm, I'm there um, and that I see it um, and that, you know, it's, it's not a passive thing for me. Beautiful. Wow. That was so beautifully said. And <laughs> I really, I really appreciate that parenting style and, and the way that you look at your responsibility as a parent and you really hold that in such a high regard. And, you know, um, wow, just, I'm just so, I'm so very, very thrilled for your girls and for you and Daniel. And, you know, it's just a beautiful thing to see cause, and before we get on out of here, I kind of want to touch on one last thing. Um, I know we, I know you can't give too many details about it, but you're such a natural on this podcast and I know, but please let the folks know you got something else coming up in the near works. I do. So I'm joining a podcast. Um, we start recording next week. Uh, it'll launch in March. Um, it'll be all things mom. Um, and if you follow me, um, on Instagram, you know, that I'm part of San Francisco Bay Area Moms Collective. Um, I've been writing for them for almost six years now. It'll be six years in May. Um, and it's, it's been a wonderful experience of, you know, getting to know, um, other moms, uh, and writing about the things that I love and kind of, you know, how my, parent journey and my mom journey has kind of evolved the last six years. I mean, six years now I have two kids. Um, and, you know, all the different things that we talk about, there are also things that, you know, that I, when I write for the blog that are, uh, have nothing to do with children <laughs> <laughs> that are doing adult things and women things. Um, but I feel like that's another, that's another, that's another podcast. There you we go. can talk about some of those adult things later. That's almost like, I almost feel like you need to have an R rated after hours kind of <laughs> You're nothing during the day, because I feel like there's some great content that I feel like nobody talks about, Certainly, but would not be safe for like uh, normal business hours. There we go. There we go. Yeah, so That'll be after hours. March. Super excited. <laughs> that's awesome. I, the people can look forward to that. And I I'm definitely looking forward to that. And hopefully maybe we can work together further down the line. I'd love to be a part of what you guys are doing. If you guys ever need a guest to come on board from a, from a man standpoint, right. Uh, to, to kind of, you know, if you want to spice it up a little bit, I'd, I'd be more than willing to join your <laughs> cross platforms, you know, that would be fun. Yeah. yeah I think absolutely. Be fun. Yeah, absolutely. Cause, and you know, this has been such a great time, honestly, like, Again, it was something I was looking forward to, and I'm really glad we got to do this. I'm pretty sure we'll get to do this again down the line. And uh, oh, you were just so. such a like you're such a natural. A other, there's such a whole other talk. There's a bunch of other talks we haven't even touched. We haven't even talked about like <laughs> this city. Oh, I know. Um, and that's like another half hour, or that could be another hour. <laughs> At of, least, like, you know, uh, you know, talking about like what's been going on, and there's so much. A lot. There is so much happening right. um, and it's, 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 it's evolving. And this is kind of, we're, we're at interesting paradox in the city right now. Totally. We're really at this interesting kind of like crossroads. And I'm, 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 I'm excited. I'm excited for what's next. <laughs> Me too. I, I've really been saying this for a while now. I feel like not only in the city, but in the world, like we've been going through this massive shift, this like universal shift and, you know, things are going to fall into place. And I'm really curious fascinated and excited about how things are going to fall into place and what that's going to mean for all of us going forward so um yeah we will definitely have to get into that at some point down the line because it's absolutely uh, when we have more time for sure but um let folks know how they can reach you if like you're uh you know how they can follow your content and everything like that uh so i'm on instagram um at working traveling mommy if you follow seal the source you'll see my handle you see my running shoes that's <laughs> that we have on uh because i that's kind of where I, I am in life i feel like i'm constantly running i'm constantly going but it's a good meta you know the shoes as opposed to let's say my heels and my suits right now are <laughs> um you know 
a good uh, symbol for what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you know, I should probably change my handle because um, I'm not traveling as much too. you know. But I love running. that handle, though. It's a, it, it's literally. Are you traveling yeah, yeah, I love that handle. Uh, but yes, yeah, so I'm always on the go. And so I, I, you know, the shoes, you know, I think symbolize kind of like what I'm, what I'm at right now. Mm -hmm. um, you know, at some point, I'll probably sw switch the photo to like mean heels. Okay. Uh, when I'm back and, you know, you know, doing what I love most. Um, but in the meantime, the running shoes will be it. So, so what about uh, SF, SF Bay Area Moms? Like uh, plug that one too. Yeah, so SF, um, so I think on Instagram, it is SF Bay, SF Bay Area dot moms. So it's all local mom content. Um, all our mom writers are from different parts of the Bay Area. So we do represent the whole San Francisco Bay Area. Um, our, our owner um, is based out of Clayton, our managing editor, Olga, I think is also in East Bay, but all our writers are from different parts of the area and all our content is really about, um, you know, local moms and things that, you know, we love and are passionate about. We've got stuff about, you know, summer camp, um, our summer camp guide, I think is coming out. So there's a lot of great content for a lot of local moms. So um, if you've got local parents that are, um, you know, looking for some interesting reads, um, you know, our blog is where it's at. And it's, it's been really awesome to be part of that group of writers. And just a community sense too, right? If they yeah, want to follow that, community. if you're parents and you want to just follow like yeah. a community and be a part of a community. Yeah. And, and also um, my cousin Sunshine here, she takes over on Thursdays. It's uh what is it? Uh, Thursdays with John? Well, Thursdays with John. So I take over that. I take over our Instagram page and you basically follow me for the day. <laughs> All right. <laughs> all right well right on because I, I really appreciate you giving your time i know Thank you're super you. busy you've got the so two girls fun. oh so much fun and we're gonna do it again for sure like i fully envision happening and this this happening again for sure and i learned a lot i'm sure anybody listening to this can learn a lot and it was just a whole lot of fun, <laughs> fun. So. thank you so much for having me and like for you know having this dialogue i feel like we need to have this kind of offline you know Totally. You need to come over for dinner someday, you know, come over, hang out with us. Yes. It'll be good, time. good times. One hundred percent that we're going to make that happen in the future for sure. You know, and uh, yeah, no, one hundred percent. And, you know, before we get on out of here, I just want to thank the audience. Thank you so much for tuning in, tapping in with us and just really supporting what we got going on over here. You got a chance to meet some really people, uh, people that are really near and dear to my heart, my cousin, sunshine, Jordan recently for me to be able to share my family and the stuff that's going on in my life and you following and supporting it. I really appreciate y'all. And, you know, I do it for you guys. I do it to really help provide value in your life and really help. I, I talk about stuff that I'm, I'm doing in my life. I'm implementing in my life. I'm never going to talk about something that I don't know about. So, um, you know, I really appreciate y'all and thank you for tuning in and, like we do at each at the end of each episode, stay up and stay blessed, y'all. Big love. Peace. <laughs>